Okay, teardown time. Uh, this is the ESP8266. Uh, I was originally offered as a Wi-Fi to serial port converter, uh, but people quickly realized that uh, the ESP8266 uh, is a fascinating system on chip. Uh, it combines a fairly decent CPU section with a good selection of peripherals, most uniquely, of course, the Wi-Fi. And there's a pretty good tool chain out there. You can use this as a general purpose processor. Uh, in this video, I'm going to take a look at some of the engineering we can uh, see on the circuit board inside the silicon dies. Uh, let's start out on the right. Uh, the most obvious uh, feature, of course, that uh, squiggly line, uh, and that's a Wi-Fi antenna, of course. Um, it actually has a name. Uh, it's called a meandered inverted F antenna. I'll, I'll show up a bunch of uh, papers on my blog here as to some of the technology. It's a well-studied antenna, um, and there's a particularly good uh, web paper out there. Uh, but let's take a zoom into it. Uh, the energy for it is basically driven from the integrated circuit uh, to the top point there on the top left. Uh, and then there's a, a ground trace that goes to a little via that goes to the ground plane. And then the squiggly line goes off and actually has the energy. Now, in antenna design, you have to uh, design them for maximum power transfer. And that means uh, a fraction of a wavelength, usually a whole wavelength, half wavelength, quarter wavelength, and very unusually, a 5 eighths wavelength. Uh, now, that one looks like a quarter wavelength antenna. Um, and of course, there's no need to guess because that's simply engineering. Uh, the typical way to analyze these is to uh, photograph the circuit board uh, like this with a, a good macro lens so you don't get a lot of pin cushioning on the image. Uh, import that image into a CAD system um, using what, TurboCAD here, pretty decent little package, very inexpensive. Tons of uh, choices out there for that. Uh, scale the drawing exactly and then of course you can uh, calculate the length of the trace. Okay, uh, so I know the antenna is 41 and a quarter millimeters. Does that match any uh, theoretical calculations? Uh, pop up the classic here, which relates velocity, wavelength, and frequency. Uh, the frequency, of course, is uh, probably the midpoint of the uh, Wi-Fi band, about 2.442 gig. Uh, the velocity, of course, is uh, the speed of light uh, times a adjustment factor because the electromagnetic waves are slowed by the PCB material. Let's assume it's about 0.8 slowing. Um, and that gives me a quarter wavelength calculation of 24.98 millimeters. Now, that doesn't match, of course, 41.25, um, and that's because things are a little more complicated. Uh, these meandered antennas seem to have some sort of mutual coupling between the meanders. And to figure out an adjustment factor, you have to dig into a whole bunch of papers. Uh, everything seems to refer to this paper here. It's a PhD dissertation from 1982, uh, but it seems to have one most citations uh, indicating to me it's probably the start of all the research. And uh, he talks about an adjustment factor you need to do about 0.6. And when I put that factor in, uh, I get a theoretical calculation of 24.98, and of course uh, the measure 24.75, uh, which tells me that uh, indeed this is probably a quarter wavelength antenna. Okay, well over here, let's take a look at the uh, golden finish of the antenna. Uh, it is gold. Uh, it's actually electroless nickel immersion gold finish. Sounds pretty fancy, but it's actually a very reasonable process, even for consumer goods. Uh, the gold plating is only a few atoms thick. The reason that gold is a great choice here is that it's, of course, corrosion resistant. Uh, you don't want things like fingerprints causing corrosion on the circuit board, which then, of course, would affect the antenna performance. Let's uh, zoom back out and let's take a look again at the top of the circuit board and now zoom into the uh, main show, which, of course, is the system uh, on chip, which is providing all the, that incredible functionality. Uh, I've just desoldered it here and now we're taking a look at the uh, bottom side of it. You can see, of course, a great large silver square. Uh, that's a uh, transfer pad for heat. Uh, the actual package has very little mass to it. It's very critical to take the heat from the silicon dye and uh, get it out to the environment to prevent overheating. So it's a classic way of doing it. Uh, you'll, plate a, a hole on a, you'll plate a pad on the other side of the circuit board, solder it together, of course, and the heat will flow nicely. Let's uh, take this package here. Of course, it's obscuring some good stuff, which is the silicon dye. I'll do an acid de-encapsulation. Let's pop up the uh, photomicrographs. Okay, so uh, two major sections to this integrated circuit. Uh, the highlighted red portion is basically the digital logic. It'll have the processor and the digital peripherals. What's visually more interesting, of course, is the RF side. Uh, all those hexagons uh, are inductors. Let's just zoom into one of them and uh, trace it around with a pencil here. Uh, you can see that it uh, sort of has a very unique uh, sort of serpentining that's going on. I presume that's to, to uh, even out the fields or something. If anyone knows actually more about uh, RF inductors and semiconductors, I uh, wouldn't mind hearing from you. 
uh, but they certainly visually look really nice. Uh, zooming over to another part of the chip here, you can sort of see the next step you have to do when you analyze a semiconductor uh, is to recognize it's a whole bunch of layers. Um, there's a top metal layer, but there's a whole bunch of layers of what's known as polysilicon below that. Uh, and if you really get into analyzing these things, you actually then have to have the ability to uh, de-layer a chip. And that starts to get uh, pretty sophisticated, but uh, just popping the uh, the casing off a uh, semiconductor is pretty uh, straightforward and uh, gives you these very visually stunning sort of photographs. You get a real sense, of course, of all the neat technology that's going on, and even though it's a tremendously small bit of silicon. Uh, let's uh, pop over to the other side here and let's take a look at the uh, SPI boot prom. Uh, this is the photomicrograph of that. Um, I must have been a bit surprised by this one here. It looks like there's multiple arrays for the memory. Or either that or the some metalization that runs from one side of the die to the other. Uh, I expected some random logic, of course, and that's what's happening on the left-hand side and the right-hand side because there's a sort of a three-wire digital interface. But it's kind of expecting the array to be actually completely uh, contiguous, so something going on there. But uh, again, another colorful and cheerful picture uh, with all sorts of neat sophistication. So, um, world of engineering all over this product, and of course, I uh, just touched upon a few of the interesting things I found uh, when I took a quick look at it.